Today, we're gonna add a little built-in storage to our cluttered laundry room. Our laundry room isn't very big. It really is just big enough to house our laundry machines, some shelves, and the food pantry. The design is relatively simple. It will hold our dog food bin, our laundry basket, and all of our bags that we use for grocery shopping. I'll be using some sanded 3 quarter inch plywood for this. Half inch would also work, but they sell these really nice sanded sheets at Home Depot in my area for pretty cheap, so I went with it. It's a little sketchy for me in my space to break down a full sheet of plywood on the table saw, so I just began breaking things down using my circular saw. I then can move over to the table saw to begin breaking down into all of the components of the build. For my specific design, everything could be built from one full sheet of plywood and then another half sheet. Anytime I'm breaking down pieces that should be the same size, I try to cut them in the order that allows me to move the fence on my saw the least amount of times. Once everything was cut to size, I turned my attention to the top of the built-in. Now with a CNC, this would be relatively straightforward, but without one, this took a bit of work. My plan was to do everything with my router using a series of jigs and straight edges. I just didn't think using a jigsaw would give me the best result. So I spent a good amount of time measuring and marking out where all of my cuts would go and then got to work. Now for all of the straight edges, I'm using a scrap piece of hardwood with a flat edge and some squeeze clamps to hold it in place. Using a half inch straight bit, I could figure out exactly where to clamp it down and then could do a series of passes to cut through the wood. Now being three quarters of an inch thick, I think I did four passes on each side. And it only took me about 20 minutes to route all of these pieces out and the result was really good. Now originally I planned to use some spare hardboard that I had. With it being really thin, it would allow me the most range to plunge the router through the hole that I had cut. Unfortunately, I needed something thicker that I could drill screws into. It just meant I instead needed to rebuild the jig with a half inch piece of plywood. I then could screw the router in place and then do a few passes until the circle was cut out. Twenty minutes later, everything was cut out and I could move on to the next steps of rounding over all of the interior top edges at the router table. Our hands would be reaching into the various holes frequently, so I used a half inch router bit to smooth over all those surfaces. Then I could give all of the exposed surfaces and edges a good sanding. So this is obviously a built-in and most of the assembly would be hidden, so I'm just using pocket holes to pull it all together. I think I did three per side and I didn't even bother using any glue. For the side that would serve as storage for all of our grocery bags, I didn't want the bin to just go all the way to the bottom. That would be a little bit too deep to reach into, so I used the remaining plywood I had to build a little structure that would help contain the space a bit better. It wouldn't hold anything heavy, so I just secured it in place with some glue and brad nails, and in reality, I probably didn't even need to do this as it actually just took away more storage. While I had it upside down, I could also add the piece of plywood that would serve as the base. And I used a speed square to make sure everything was lined up and perpendicular. And I could have also just used a few pieces of scrap wood as spacers, but this worked out just fine. Now that the structure was built, I could rip and cut to size what would end up being the front and back of the piece. You don't actually need a backing for this, but I wasn't sure how even my floor was, so I thought it would be useful to have the backing in case I wanted to secure it to a few studs in the wall. This plywood was also a sanded veneer, so already looked pretty good, but I gave it a light sanding as well. The framing was pretty square, but just a little off without any sheathing to hold it together, so I ended up using one of my big four foot clamps from Rockler to pull the piece together before adding glue. Dropping the piece into place, and then using some brad nails and all of the touch points to tack it in place. After that, the entire piece was nice and square. Ooh. 
Last minute, I decided the front of it could use a little bit extra. It was just a little plain in design. So I bought some quarter inch MDF and ripped it down and cut it to its final length over at the table saw to make some face framing. MDF cuts really cleanly, but don't be like me and forget your dust mask when cutting it through. That dust is awful. To secure it in place, I added some glue to the back of the strips and then this time used pin nails to tack it in place. The pin nails are really tiny and it makes filling in those holes when prepping for finishing a lot easier. Also a step which I somehow forgot to film. For painting, I wanted to keep it simple and quick so I'm using a flat white paint and primer from Rust-Oleum. Using my compressor, I cleaned off all of the excess dust after sanding down the piece one more time, and then added a few coats on all of the exposed surfaces. While it dried, I could begin preparing the room for installation. I removed all the clutter from the area so I could get to all of the baseboards. Off camera, I used a box cutter to score the caulk lines to avoid damaging the drywall and paint as much as possible. Using a pry bar and a hammer, I could hammer every 10 inches or so and begin to pull it off. And I also removed this little rounded trim and hammered in the leftover brad nails. I then could finish off the build by sliding the built-in into its place. My floor isn't level, so after sliding it all the way in, I spread out a few thin strips underneath so it sat flush to the wall. I then secured it to the adjacent cabinets and then into a few studs from the back. Now I lost the footage, but the last thing to do was add back in that new rounded over strip at the bottom to complete the design. And with that, the simple laundry room build was done. Nothing spectacular, but it has been nice being a little bit more organized in what is a rather small space in our house. And that's going to wrap it up for me on this one. Thanks for watching.